guys, how's it going? Today we're working on two different projects. We're out here in the greenhouse first to start some chicken fodder, which is supplemental feed for our chickens. It's almost like growing microgreens for them, uh, but it's easier, you don't have to use soil. You take the seed of some kind of forage crop, you can do sorghum, in our case we're doing wheat, corn, something like that, and you grow the seed on without soil, I'll show you how, uh, to where you just have a little stalk and maybe some leaves and then you can feed it to your chickens. And it's just such a great thing right now, especially ours are not free range, although right now with a snow floor, there's not a whole lot to find out there. Uh, but we give our chickens tons of extra stuff. You know, any greens from the kitchen, any kitchen scraps like vegetable stuff, we give it to them. I've got leftover kale, which worked out really well. We've been just kind of giving them one or two of those at a time. And then of course they get their regular pellet feed and all of that and the mealworms that the, kid, the kids love to give them. But I thought it would be really nice and so easy to start some of this today. And then when we're done with that, we're gonna head to the root cellar, grab a butternut squash that we grew in the garden this last year. We're gonna take it inside and make some butternut squash bread, which I was just introduced to this last week. Bethany made some and brought it in and it was so good. So she gave us the recipe so I could show you. I'm just so excited. I just never thought about using butternut squash in that way. Let's get our chicken fodder process started. This is all I'm gonna be using, just some old trays that I have, and these are completely unnecessary. I'm just using them to catch water. Um, so in this one, I've already poked my holes. You do need drainage holes, so I popped some holes in the corners of this tray and I'm just setting them on top of some old pots here. That way I can use this water to water our lawn, which is right back here. You wanna soak your wheat seed for about 24 hours before you start this process. So last night I did bring the bag in here, poured a little bit in the bucket, topped it up with water so that we'd be ready to start the actual like kind of planting process today. And this chicken wheat came from my parents' garden center. They clean a lot of wheat seed in their seed plant and these are the tailings. So these are all the seeds that were kicked out as being like imperfect or some in some cases there's some chaff like I can see some right here. Um, sometimes there's like broken seeds in there, but a lot of them are still really good. So this whole 50 pound bag is $8.50. <laughs> And I mean, the birds love it. A lot of people buy this to feed wildlife through the winter time. And you can see in this bucket, I knew I would have some you know, seeds that weren't good floating on the top, but not a lot. There's a little chaff here, but all of this stuff down here, look at that. That's amazing. I think I'm gonna need more trays. I might need to use all four of my trays today. I think I soaked too, mu too much. So this is basically all we're gonna do, you guys. We're gonna take handfuls of this pre-soaked seed let it drain a bit. It is chilly. Oh my word. And we're going to spread it out on the bottom of this tray. Just a nice even layer, not too thick. So this is what it's supposed to look like right here. Now I did do my layer a tiny bit more thick than you would probably need to if you knew all your seed was completely perfect. But since we're dealing with, you know, there, I can see some cracked seeds in here and I know not all of them will germinate, I did a little bit extra. So let's prep this tray and get it filled. These are done. This is all we have to do today. So I did rinse them again, which we will be doing twice a day to make sure the seeds stay wet. But other than that, I mean, you just kind of want to wait until they sprout and start to grow. It's a super easy process and it's super fast because wheat grows really, really fast. Now I am going to put domes on mine because I have them positioned in the warmest spot in the greenhouse because I want it to happen even faster. Uh, but because it's the warmest spot, that means it's getting the most heat from the heater and I don't want it to dry the seed out. So I'll dome mine until they kind of start to sprout a little bit, but we'll be out here twice a day to rinse them. And I'm hoping that I can keep like, I'll you know empty out one tray to give to the chickens. And when I do that, I'll fill it with more chicken wheat and we'll just kind of keep a rotating process of it going out here. And we only just need a couple of trays. I only have four chickens. If you have more chickens than that, you could, you know, do as many trays as you want. I think the most important thing is to make sure one, your container drains because you don't want water collecting. You don't have any soil to absorb it or any of that sort of thing. Uh, you also want to make sure you have a fairly strong source of light because even though you're growing them up not very big, 
just kind of like microgreens, you want a strong, healthy plant. Out here, they'll get plenty of light. You could put them underneath a grow light inside or really uh, near a, like a south or west facing window, that would work as well. So I've got my domes here. This will just help out a tiny bit. Perfect. And I'll just leave my watering can right here, just kind of like I leave my mister by the lettuce to keep it easy. I don't think I'm gonna fill up another tray with the leftover. I think we can just go give it to the chickens. Yeah, let's go see what they think about this. Hey girls. This right here is why we want to keep our chickens happy. Beautiful. Good job, girls. Yeah, they're in there just working that pile. And isn't that a thing of beauty? They're so pretty. And eggs are expensive right now, and we go through a lot more of them now than we used to. I want to say like, I don't know, maybe like eight a day. Um, so if we can even get four out of the chickens a day, that's a help. Okay, now I'm gonna go the long way through the studio to get to the root cellar and we'll grab a butternut squash. much later in the day than when I started this project, but it does take the butternut squash one hour to bake. It's super easy to do. I already did it. So I brought the butternut squash inside. I've got a helper here too. Samantha Grace, are you going to help me bake? Bake. Yeah. Bake. Bake. Here. You can have the spoon. Ooh. Yeah. So I cut the top off the squash and then cut it in half lengthwise and then used a large spoon to scoop out the seeds, sprinkled it with a little bit of salt, put it face down on like a baking pan that I had covered with foil, poured a little bit of water in and then baked it at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for one hour just until it's fork tender. You're doing great, baby. So this process is going to be interesting because <laughs> Samantha's going to help me, but this is basically all you need to know and we will type it up and put it below this video but you can pause it right now if you would like to what your turn yeah. well no baby you have your own paper see this is my paper that i scribbled on now the original recipe has one and a half teaspoons of cinnamon i'm going to up that i might even double it and i don't have any orange juice but i do have pineapple juice so that's what i'm going to use i think it's going to make it delicious also this is what i'm going to be baking it in this is a rosebud, rosebud pan. That's what it says with a piece of butternut squashed up to the bottom. Uh, Nordic ware. My mother-in-law got this for me. Isn't that the cutest thing? Yeah. Yeah, Graham got that for me. Yeah, it's in the shape of roses. Isn't that sweet? Sweet. Yeah. I've got all the ingredients set out. I washed a couple of the eggs that we grabbed today. Uh, but basically what we're going to do is mix together the dry ingredients, mix together the wet, mix them together, pour them into the prepared pan. And since we're doing muffins, we'll bake them at 350 for about 20 minutes. And Samantha Grace is going to be helping me, right? Are you going to measure stuff out? 
and pour it in. What shape is this in? Is that a flower? Flower. Can you say rose? Rose. Rose, yeah. It's gonna take us a while to bake them because it makes about, I think 16 um, muffins and this only has six in it. No. You want it for yours? I need to pick this off. There's a piece of squash on it. There we go. All right guys, we are gonna speed this process up and show you what they look like in the end. Butternut squash. I like butternut squash. Oh man. Good. Whoa. Yeah. That's even really good. even better because it's shaped like a rose. Yes. Do it like this, and then here's your napkin that goes on your lap, dude. Okay. Mm -hmm. Here you go, look at this. Watch. Is it warm? Yeah. How about one of these? I'll take this one. Okay. Perfect. Look at that. Did you try the hot chocolate yet? Yeah. Benjamin and I are here in the Hartley enjoying our butternut squash muffins and hot chocolate. I just started taking ornaments off the tree in here, but I am so thrilled with how these muffins turned out. Aren't they so pretty? That little rose tin is just wonderful, and it works perfect with our rose tea set, don't you think, Benjamin? Mm -hmm. Do you love those? Oh yeah. <laughs> oh my, oh my, Benjamin. Benjamin, small bites. It's clearly the next day. Uh, I got these done fairly late in the evening. It took three different times, or three different batches in the oven, so I had to clean the tin in between each one. Uh, it made 18 total, and we ate, how many did you eat last night? Three. Three, you kept asking for more of those ball thingies. They do kind of look like balls. <laughs> and they were the best, you guys, right out of the oven, still warm with a little tiny sliver of butter on the top, and you just kind of let it melt over the top of the muffin. <gasps> Oh my goodness. And that one squash made enough puree for another batch. I could have probably scraped it a little bit more clean, but uh, I got enough in the freezer to make another batch of these when we are feeling like it. I also think that the pineapple juice, I mean, Bethany's that she brought, I think she used orange juice, um, and it was amazing. And I don't know, I'd have to maybe taste them like one bite right after the other to tell any difference, but pineapple juice was a fine substitution. I did uh, double the amount of cinnamon, but I and I did a little bit extra on the other spices, but not a full double. And so it made it a little bit more strong in the flavor department. I like a lot of cinnamon though, so that's completely subjective. But I think these are just so sweet. Here you go, dude. You want ball a second thingy, one? Ball thingy. A ball thingy. It's a rose muffin. Rose muffin. 
Yeah. Anyway, guys, that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll give you an update on the chicken fodder when that comes up and we start seeing some green. I did go rinse it this morning and I'll do it again this afternoon. So we'll be doing that for a few days. But anyway, it's fun to have those kinds of things in the works just to see something growing, even if it's short term. So thank you guys so much for watching and we will see you in the next one. Bye. Cheers. Oh, delicious. Yum.